How's it going, Amber? Hi. Oh my God, you are, I think this is a kind of a dream project for you. Am I right? You've been dreaming this. Yes, absolutely. I feel like everybody adores The Wiz and to some extent, The Wiz has done real work for you. Like, you know, being a little kid, I it just didn't occur to me that I could be, you know, like at a pearl and have my own character and my own jokes because I was a girl who um, was black. I had never really seen that before. Uh -huh. I feel like every person has something like that. The Wiz reached out and spoke mm. to you specifically and everybody has um, a case of that where it just expanded how you thought about what entertainment could be. A lot of the audience was children and the children were entertained and the parents were entertained. Everybody loved, uh, you know, every moment of it. And that you don't get a lot. The show doesn't talk down to the kids. That's right. And it doesn't make the parents feel like they're stuck at a kid's shop. That's right. They're and they don't topic. like segregate the jokes yeah. from old people jokes and baby jokes. That it's everybody laughing at the same joke, which I, that's the dream. Okay, so that immediately feels like that's a, that's a big challenge. Okay, I feel two ways about it. Uh -huh. Because people love The Wiz so much that they're really gonna defend it and it better be just like they want it to be. But also, people love The Wiz so much that they're, you know, <laughs> there to have a great time. Like, it's both. Uh -huh. I feel different every day. To, today, <laughs> I feel like, ah, it's The Wiz, it's great. But yesterday, I was like, oh God, everyone's gonna be so <laughs> crazy because we changed this and this. But I think, I hope, people are gonna love it. So what was your entry point? Do you remember your very first exposure to The Wiz? Yeah, watching it, watching the movie. Yep, same. In the basement on the big TV. We had one big TV. The whole family sat down and we watched it together and everybody knew it already. Mm. And I just thought, huh, how odd. Everybody knows this whole movie. And then come to find out if you leave your house and go to almost any house in America, everybody knows every part of the Wiz. So let's talk about this. This is a show written in the 70s. Yeah. Obviously a huge hit on Broadway. Nobody knew it was gonna be a hit and then it just reached people and it was a word of mouth hit and, and legendary. It has a super cool score. The book by William F. Brown, mm -hmm. I feel like music from that period has maybe sort of aged better than language of the period, right? That's right. But it's kind of the thing that everyone wants to make sure they're looking at it with fresh eyes. Yeah. So is that is that how you would sort of describe it as well? What like what your task is here? Yeah, I feel like my task is to bring the Wiz into 2024, not like, Dorothy's holding an iPad, or we're, you <laughs> know, no. using today's <laughs> slang. But it's so that when you do it in a high school, you know, kids aren't like, hey, I can't be doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It has to be of today mm -hmm. um, as far as our sensibilities go. Right. So that is the first task. Yeah. Because, buddy, there's it, it can be dicey. But one of the things I thought was really cool about The Wiz is how 70s it was. Yeah. And it was it had a ton of slang from the right. 70s and it just made it cool. Uh -huh. it, it, like either The Wiz takes place in 1970 something or it just has no time, right. right? So I wanted to write one that kids can do 20 years from now mm -hmm. that you couldn't read yep. it and go, this is from this exact period. Mm -hmm. So I hope that 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 I did that. <laughs> you first took this on five years ago, right? It, you did it at the Muni That's uh, right. summer production. That yeah. was when you first um, wrote a book, a new book of The Wiz. Yeah. It's years later. So you've been living with this for for a while. I mean, do you like just walk around thinking about Out of Pearl and Eveline and Aunt M and? It's, n it, I do uh -huh. a little bit, but I think it's, I suffer a little bit because I have a late night background. Yeah. So I'm used to writing a thing and then performing it for an audience and then the audience makes the edit with their right reactions, away. right? Yeah. So that I'm an audience edit type of person, but you don't really get to do that on Broadway. Those big changes, they're they're done. 
we're, wow. we're locking it in. Yeah, I know Shelly Williams mentioned to me that she wanted uh, the lion, the scarecrow, and the tin man to be of the same age as Dorothy, which I think is a really interesting, make them more like a peer group yeah. instead of uncles. What other kinds of things are you exploring with, within this? It's hard to write a show where everyone knows everything that's about to happen. <laughs> It's really hard to build tension. <laughs> we all know Eveline's going to get you. We know she's going to get you. And we know she's probably going to melt at some point. We all know it. Because of that, we get to explore other things, right? Uh -huh. Because it's inevitable that the tornado's going to come. It's inevitable that she'll get home. It really leaves a lot of space for us to go, how does Dorothy talk to the scarecrow? Like, what do they have in common? Mm -hmm. Which was another great thing that Shelley did, was when she put them all in the same age group, it really changed everything. Mm -hmm. For her to be a part of this group is cool. For her to be a young black girl leading these people, like, that's fantastic. And we wanted to maybe get a little bit of that. For her to be like the natural leader that she is. Mm -hmm. And then in the end of our version, she becomes the president. I'm just kidding. <laughs>